Welcome back to Pope Mr. Channel. In this video, I will give you through the installation, wiring, and setup process of the Poson Smart 10K solar inverter, ensuring successful setup for your 10 kilowatt solar system. The Poson Smart 10K is a highly versatile inverter with a rating of power of 10 kilowatt, and the maximum configuration supports of 11 kilowatt for the photovoltaic array. It boasts a wide photovoltaic maximum power point tracking range of 125 to 425 volt, 2 MPP trackers and a maximum current of 22 amp per channel. Additionally, the charging module is capable of delivering a maximum charging current of 200 Ampere. Apart from its fundamental features, this inverter supports both single-phase and split-phase applications, and is cost equal with a powerful function for time of use charging and discharging. Due to limitations on the setting, we will be using an installation board instead of a wall to demonstrate the general installation process. Before installation, please ensure to choose a suitable indoor space that is dry, well ventilated, and at a comfortable temperature. To ensure proper air circulation around the inverter, you should leave about 20 cm of space on each side and about 50 cm of space above and below it when selecting the installation location. Regarding the installation height, it is advisable to align the LCD screen with the user's line of the sign for easy monitoring of data and operational data in the future. We recommend that during the installation process, two or more individuals work together to handle and position the inverter to avoid accidents. You may have noticed that we did not use screw during the installation process due to the limitation of the installation board. However, please ensure to follow the instruction in the installation guide and use M5 screw for proper fixation when you install it. Once you are ready, start by unscrewing the five screws to remove the bottom port cover. Then connect the cable in the follow order. The battery, PV input, AC input, and AC output. Pay close attention to distinguish between the positive and the negative terminals and identify the light and neutral wires. It is essential to use appropriately sized cables and circuit breakers according to the specific needs. Here are the recommended modules for the cables and circuit breakers that we suggest. Installing circuit breaker not only enhances the overall safety of the system, but also facilitates the wiring, maintenance, and the troubleshooting process. Therefore, it is crucial to install or separate circuit breakers on each line, and during the wire process, ensure that the circuit breakers are in the off position. After complete above wiring, we need to check if the cables are reserved or properly connected. Once confirmed, reinstall the port cover onto the inverter. Next, close the circuit breaker for the battery circuit and then use the switch at the button to start the inverter. If the indicator line shows no abnormalities, proceed to close the circuit breaker for the PV input, AC input, and AC output lines. If the fault signal indicator lights on the display interface do not flash, it indicates that the inverter has started up successfully. Let's begin with a brief overview of the inverter's user interface. The LED indicator lines provide instead of information of the AC output, charging data, and any potential fault. The four function buttons include the setting button, off button, down button, and the confirm button. The settings button allows you to enter or exceed the setup program, while the up and down button enable you to navigate through the different setting items and options. Lastly, the enter button is used to enter the specific setting item or confirm your choosing. Once the device is running smoothly, the LCD screen will display the main page. To assess the setup program, simply press the setting button. The setting item number icon will start flashing, and the first item displays the setting item 0, which allows you to exceed the settings menu. 
press the confirm button will enter the setting item 0 and pressing it again will confirm the setting for the item 0. Thereby exceeding the setup program and return to the main page. To navigate back to the setting menu, press the up button to enter the setting item 1. Setting item 1 is used to determine the AC output power priority. The default option UTI prioritizes utility power as the main source for the load. When solar power is available, it combines with the utility power to supply energy to the load. Battery power is only utilized when utility power is available. On the other hand, the SBU option assigns solar power as the primary power source for the load when it is sufficient available. In case of insufficient solar power, the battery power acts as a supplementary source. Utility power is only utilized when solar power is available and the battery voltage is too low. The charging logic for SBU follows the sequence of the solar power, battery power and the utility power. Lastly, the SOL option ensures that solar power takes precedence in supplying energy to the low. If solar power is not accessible, the output power source switch to the battery power. When battery voltage drops too low, it then switch to the utility power. Setting item 2 is used to adjust the AC output frequency. If the inverter connected to the utility power, it automatically synchronizes the AC output frequency with the utility power frequency. Setting item 3 allows you to configure the AC output voltage range. For AC output voltage of 120 or 110 volt, it is recommended to select the UPS option. Indicate that the output is powered by an uninterruptible power supply. The corresponding input voltage range is between the 90 volt and 140 volt, providing a relative narrow and stable voltage range. If the output voltage is 100 or 105 volt, it is advisable to choose APL option, which designates output for general household applications. Setting item 4 determines the battery voltage ratio at switch the output power priority switch from battery power to utility power. When the battery voltage falls below this threshold, the inverter switch to utility power to supply to the low. On the other hand, setting item 5 determines the battery voltage threshold at which the priority switch from utility power to battery power. When the battery power exceeds this value, the inverter switch back to using battery power to supply the load. Setting item 6 is used to prioritize the charging power source for the battery. The default charging mode is SNU, which enables simultaneous charging from both solar power and the utility power. Solar power takes priority and the utility power act as a supply main when solar power is efficient. The OSO mode indicates inclusive use of solar power for charging the battery. The CSO mode prioritizes solar power for battery charging, utilizing utility power only when solar power is available. The CUB model prioritizes utility power for battery charging, using solar power only when utility power is available. Setting item 7 allows you to configure the charging current with a maximum setting of 200 amperes. The setting item 8 is used to specify the battery type connected to the inverter. The option includes GEL battery, lithium iron phosphate battery, ternary lithium battery. USC option, cell leader side battery, and the flow leader side battery. By selecting the appropriate battery type, you can quickly configure the battery parameters.
Alternatively, you can choose USC option to optimize the battery parameters. If you select USER, you can manually adjust the setting in the i 9 to 21 to optimize the battery related parameters. In my case, I have connected the cell lead side batteries, so I would select the SLD option. However, to demonstrate a complete battery parameter setup process, I will choose the USE option here. Setting item 9 is used to specify the voltage ratio at which the bulk charging stage transition to the boost charging stage. Once the battery voltage reaches this value, the charging stage will switch to the boost charging stage. Setting item 10 allows you to set the duration of bulk charging stage. Setting item 11 is used to configure the flow charging voltage. However, this setting can only be adjusted after successful communication with the battery management system. Setting item 12 is used to set on the voltage value for the battery. Combined with the setting item 13, which determines the delay for the battery on the voltage, the inverter will cease inverting output once the battery voltage drops below the value specified in item 12, following the delay set in item 13. Setting item 14 enables you to set the voltage value for the battery on the voltage alarm. When the battery voltage falls below this value, the inverter will automatically sound an alarm. Setting item 50 is used to define the voltage limit for battery on the voltage. If the battery voltage goes below this value, the inverter will immediately shut down the inverter output. Setting item 60 allows you to enable or disable the battery equalization charging function. Choosing DIS disable it. Why selecting ENA enables it. Setting item 17 is used to set a voltage for battery equalization charging. On the other hand, setting item 18 determines the duration of the battery equalization charging process. Additionally, setting item 19 specifies the delay duration for battery equalization charging. If the battery equalization charging reaches the duration set in item 18 but doesn't reach the voltage value set in item 17, the battery will extend equalization charging time by delay duration specified in item 19. Setting item 20 is used to determine the frequency of equalization charging. Setting item 21 allows you to immediately enable or terminate battery equalization charging mode. Setting item 22 enables the power saving mode. When enabled, the inverter will automatically shut down the output after load remains below 50 watts for 5 minutes. It will automatically restart when the load exceeds its threshold. Setting 23 enables overall restart function when enabled. If the output is automatically shut down due to overload, the inverter will automatically restart after 3 minutes. However, if the inverter shut down again due to overload after 5 restart attempts, it will no longer attempt to restart. Setting item 24 enables the over temperature restart function. When enabled, if the output is automatically shut down due to the over temperature, the inverter will automatically restart once the inverter temperature returns to normal. Setting 25 is for the switch setting of the buzzer alarm. Setting 26 is used to enable the output power switch reminder. Setting 27 enables the automatic switch over to bypass when the inverter is overloaded. Setting 28 is used to set maximum grade charging current with a maximum value of 120 amperes. 
Sunny 13 can be used to set the RS485 communication address. Sunny 32 and 33 are used to enable BMS communication functionality and select the corresponding communication protocol. Setting IT34 enables the hybrid output and a grid type function. Setting IT35 is used to set the recovery voltage value for the battery under voltage status. Once the battery voltage exceeds this value, automatically discharge recovery will occur. Setting item 37 allows you to set the voltage value at which charge is re-enabled after the battery reach full charge. Setting item 38 is used to set the AC output voltage. Setting item 40 to 53 are dedicated to configure time of use charging and discharging. Item 40 to 45 are used to set up three charging time periods. Item 47 to 52 are for configure three discharging time periods. Item 46 and 53 are used to enable time of use charging and discharging function. If the item 46 enables time of use charging, the output power priority specific in item 1 will automatically switch to SBU mode, allowing utility power charging only during the designated charging time period or when the battery is under voltage. If item 53 is also enabled for time of use discharging, the output power priority will switch to UTI mode and the battery will supply load exclusively during the specific discharging time periods. Setting item 54 and 55 are used to set the local date and the time, which are utilized in conjunction with the time of use charging and discharging to determine the time periods and facilitate real-time data monitoring. Setting item 57 represents the charging circuit current value for the terminating charging. Charging will automatically stop when the current falls below this value. Setting item 63 is used to connect the neutral line with the ground wire. Depending on the safety regulation in a region, you can choose to enable this function by select ENA to connect the neutral line with the ground wire. Setting item 68 is used to select the output phase mode, which can be either split phase or single phase. After completing the final setting item 68, press set button to exceed the setup program and return to the main page. Now we have finished configuring the entire setup process for the Pulse on Smart 10K. If you have any question about Pulse on Smart 10K, please leave a comment below. To learn more about Pulse Mystery Products, feel free to visit our website. Thank you for joining us today and we will see you in our next video.